In this video, what I'd like to do is develop an intuitive understanding of what Newton's first law of motion says. Now, Newton's first law of motion is not a quantitative law. That is, there is no formula for Newton's first law of motion. It's Newton's second law of motion that is a quantitative law of motion. But for right now, we're looking at Newton's first law. So Newton's first law of motion is what's called a descriptive law of motion. That is, it describes what forces do to objects. So let's take a look at what you often encounter in a textbook. So Newton's first law is often stated as, an object at rest will remain at rest, or if an object is in motion, it will remain in motion at constant velocity in a straight line, unless acted upon by a net external force. So let's summarize some of the things that are stated within Newton's first law. It says that if the object is at rest, it will remain at rest. It also says that if an object is in motion, not only will it remain in motion, it will remain in motion at constant velocity in a straight line. So Newton's first law tells us two things. An object at rest, zero meters per second, will remain at zero meters per second. Or if it's moving, it's going to move at constant velocity. And not only at constant velocity, but constant velocity in a straight line. Now, if you look at the last statement, it says unless the object is acted upon by a net external force. So this is what an object wants to do. The object wants to either remain at rest or moving at constant velocity in a straight line. And it will continue to do so unless something causes it to change its velocity. Now, even though you don't see the word acceleration in Newton's first law of motion, what Newton's first law of motion is saying is that the thing that causes an object to change its state of motion, that is to change its velocity, that something that causes an object to change its state of motion is a force. So although you don't see this statement, change in velocity, that's what forces do. Forces cause objects to change their velocity. Or another way to say that is forces cause objects to accelerate. So let's summarize what Newton's first law of motion is actually saying. So Newton's first law of motion is telling us what forces do. So forces cause objects to do a few things. So forces cause objects to speed up or to slow down or a final and very important thing forces cause objects to change direction. And notice, when an object speeds up, slows down, or changes direction, these are three examples of acceleration. So forces cause objects to speed up, slow down, or change directions. That's what Newton's first law of motion is actually saying. So what Newton's first law of motion is telling us is what forces do to objects. Forces cause objects to speed up, slow down, or change direction. Now if you go back to Newton's first law and read it, you don't actually see the word acceleration in Newton's first law of motion. It's implied from what an object's natural state of motion is, at rest or moving at constant velocity. And one other thing that you can point out right away is an initial velocity of zero is just a special case of an object moving at constant velocity in a straight line. Now that we've dissected Newton's first law of motion into fragments, let's come up with a graphic description of what Newton's first law of motion is telling us. So if you imagine you have some object, in this case it could be an electron, it could be a proton, it could be a car, it could be a ball, it could be anything. If it's moving with a constant velocity of say 20 meters per second, and let's further assume it's moving in a nice straight line in this direction. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send this object through some box. We don't know what's going on inside the box. But what we can do is we can look at a before and after picture. So in this case, this object's going to be moving with a constant velocity of 20 meters per second. It's going to enter this box, this device. And when it reemerges from this box, it's still moving at a constant velocity. But in this case, the velocity will change from 20 meters per second to 30 meters per second. And again, it's still moving in a straight line in this direction. Now, the velocity has changed. So something within this box has applied a force to it, causing it to speed up. Now, we'll get into it more in later videos, but the force has to be directed in the direction of motion. So the force acting on this object causes it to speed up. Now, let's take a look at a second example. Let's say we have that same object with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second and it's again moving at constant velocity in a straight line in this direction. Now if we send this object through a similar box, 
and look at what happens when this object reemerges. Now let's say that the object is again moving at constant velocity when it reemerges from this box, but in this case the velocity goes from a constant velocity of 20 meters per second to a constant velocity of 10 meters per second, and it's still moving in a straight line, we can say, okay, the velocity of this object has changed. Something must have happened to this object when it went into this box to change its velocity. And the thing that Newton's second law is saying is that in order for this object's velocity to change, a force has to act on this object. Now in this case, a force has to act in the opposite direction of this object's motion in order to slow it down. So these are two examples of what forces do. Forces cause objects in this first case to speed up, to increase its velocity, that is to accelerate, or forces cause objects to slow down, to decelerate. Now what I'd like to do is do one last example of what forces do to objects. So let's take that same object with an initial velocity, initial constant velocity of 20 meters per second, and let's say that it's moving in a straight line in this direction, and this object's going to enter another box, but in this case, the object's going to reemerge moving in this direction. Now if this object reemerges with a velocity of 20 meters per second, a lot of people will say, all right, the initial velocity is a constant 20 meters per second, and it reemerges with another constant velocity of 20 meters per second. A lot of people want to say it's not accelerating, but that's not the case. In this case, there had to be something going on within this box to change the direction of this object. So although the velocity is constant, a force had to act within this box in order to cause it to change its direction. And that's the final statement of Newton's first law of motion. Forces cause objects to change direction. Now here's a really easy example of what possibly could have happened within this box in order to change this object's direction. Imagine inside this box, there was just a wall at say a 45 degree angle, so that as this object entered this box, it hit this wall, causing it to change its velocity, that is, causing it to change its direction. The magnitude of the velocity has changed, but the direction of the velocity has now changed also. But the direction of the velocity has changed, and if the direction of the velocity has changed, the object has to accelerate. We'll talk about that concept more when we talk about uniform circular motion.